All right. Well, welcome everyone to Unscrew the News. It's Bruce Scholl, and I have two fantastic new guests with me. Um, we have, uh, I know it's a controversial subject, and that's why I've invited Dave Weiss, uh, the Flat Earth Dave from flatearthdave.com to join us, and a, a new friend of mine, Brian from Memory Hole Show, to join us and question this globe theory uh, that we've all been um, um, tasked with as we grew up. Uh, I want to welcome both of you to the show. Dave and Brian, welcome to Unscrew the News. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. Uh, so, Dave, I know that we talked about this uh, just briefly before, but uh, my my first question to you is, and one of the things that I uh, found on my favorite podcast is the question of, okay, the world is upside down. The world that we're living in right now is clown world and all kinds of crazy stuff is happening. So why are we talking about the flat earth? That's the question I like to get to at the end, but I'm really happy to discuss it right at the beginning. Because um, when you understand, you know, people, we all go through the same thing. We, we, we laugh at flat earth and then we like, well, what about seasons? What about boats over the horizon? What about uh, Aristophanes with his sticks and shadows? You know, didn't the Greeks figure it out 2000 years ago? And then after all of those things are knocked down, we get frustrated. We throw our hands up. We go, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. Okay. Right. And, um, and that's right. exactly where they want you. They want you in a system where you go to work on Monday, you work all the way through the week. You know, you come home, you watch Netflix at night, right? At the weekend, the weekend, you're weekend by the weekend, right? You go oh, wow. watch sports and you watch more movies and you drink, right? Because they don't close the liquor stores for anything, no matter what, okay? And, yeah. um, and then you're back to work and then basically uh, you retire and uh, they want you dead at that point. OK, and and so when you understand that we are at the center of creation, that we're not on a spinning rock, you know, floating through heliocentric space um, in a godless or distant God universe, everything opens up. This is where people think they live, right? They live on a ball spinning at a thousand miles an hour, orbiting at sixty six thousand miles an hour, shakes the sun at about half a million miles an hour, moving sideways at over a million miles per hour in an infinite godless you know i evolved from pond scum into a fish into a frog into a you know a beaver and climbed a tree became a monkey and then had a mutant and it was a human okay this is what they want you to believe because this takes away your true power we are truly powerful beings at the center of creation our thoughts create our reality right they don't want you believing any of that they don't want you to know how powerful your mind is, how powerful vibration is. They don't want you to know that we live in this electric realm, okay, where we have incredible power. They want you lost in space, believing we're overpopulated, which is untrue. Every American family could have a quarter of an acre in Texas and the rest of the country would be empty. Every family mm -hmm. in the world could have an acre in Australia and half of Australia would be empty, okay? They want you to believe that we're running out of fossil fuels. Well. There are no such thing as fossil fuels, right? We're not running out of oil. We're not running out of any of that. And we really shouldn't even be using that because that is the lifeblood of our living realm that we're in. We should just be using the free energy that's in the air that Nikola Tesla has rediscovered for us, rediscovered. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. Right. And, uh, and we shouldn't be, you know, um, living our lives to work. We don't live to live. We live to work so we can live. We're the only species that pays to live, right? And, uh, you know, imagine, mm -hmm. imagine if, um, you know, uh, like, well, how does this all relate to flat earth? If they're hiding more land, hiding uh, uh, free energy, just those two things alone, more land, free energy. What if you, and, and uh, what if you had, you didn't have to pay for electricity for your home, air conditioning, heating, or power for your car. You had something that would just pull energy out of the ether. Nikola Tesla offered that to us in the early 1900s. And, um, yeah. and, uh, you didn't have to, you know, would that change your life? Would you even need to go to work? Why don't you just garden? You have everything else you need. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, so that's why it matters, right? When someone says, why does it matter? I, I sometimes tell them to go watch um, Plato's allegory of the cave, right? People that live in a cave and they only see shadow figures on the wall and that's their whole life. And they're like, well, what, what, what does it matter that there's more out there? You know? So right. there's a, there's a, there's my, why it matters. So once wow, you understand, and last thing, the why it matters doesn't matter if you don't believe that it's true. 
So let's find the evidence. Let's look at, you know, I, I use the analogy, you walk into a room and there's 20 slaughtered bodies there, bloody hatchets, everything, whatever you want to imagine. And uh, somebody goes in there and like, well, what's the motive? Why would they do this? You know, and it's like, well, until you tell me that, I'm not going to believe it. Well, today I'm going to show you all the dead bodies, okay? And that, that show mm -hmm. that the, the Earth is not a spinning ball in a scientifically impossible space vacuum. Wow, fantastic. Hey, all Brian, right. I know that you're itching to ask a question, so... Cool. So I, I, I guess, I mean, I'll, I'll take a step back real quick, because I mean, we all grew up probably in a similar environment, believing in the, in, you know, the earth is a sphere or a globe or whatever. So how, like, and, and I'm, one, I'm one of these people that I'm always seeking the truth. Um, and I know I don't believe the media. I don't believe a lot of that stuff. I, I like to rather search for the evidence and, you know, things set off my red flags oftentimes. So how, how is it that you came to change your mind about the earth, the shape of the earth, let's say, whether it's a flat or, or a globe or whatever, like, like, what is it that, that made that change for you that you kind of went down that rabbit hole? Like, how does that start? Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a very good question. And um, it, I was doing a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and it was looking into all of the deceptions, you know, from the thing that happened in New York to the thing that happened at the Boston Marathon to the thing that happened in Connecticut at the school to all these other things. Right. And so I was uh, I had eyes open enough to see through those deceptions. And then people said, hey, Dave, have you looked into Flat Earth? When I first got the first email, a couple emails, I was like, oh, that's funny. Delete, delete, delete. Then it kept coming. I'm like, all right, ban, ban, ban. You can never, ever comment here again. And then people kept. You know, I was banning people left and right because I wouldn't even look at it. I would just watch this one minute video, David, watch this one minute video. And I'm like, no, I'm too, too busy and it's too stupid. I, you know, I have my mind's open to anything, but flat earth, come on. Right. And then one day I'm talking to my friend, Sophia Smallstorm, who did 9-11 Mysteries. And um, and we're talking and we're talking. Actually, I was on the way in to record the podcast. I live in Connecticut. Truth. Fact. Oh. Is it a belief? Uh, Do I live in Connecticut? I right. believe. All right. It's believe. a belief. All right. And I'm, I'm driving in New York City. I'm talking to her the whole way in. She's a long talker. And I'm in the studio and we're setting up the studio and it's going on and on and on. And while I'm talking to her, I'm banning people on Facebook from commenting because they're putting stupid okay. clutter memes and shit. Nope. Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to swear? Um, I try yeah, to yeah. I try not to swear. And uh, they're, they're putting flat earth memes and stuff and I'm banning them. And she goes, and we were talking about some, um, fake bombing event that had just happened. And I said, I was like, Sophia, I'm so blown away in the amount of deception in this world. And she goes, oh, David, it's worse than that. I think the earth might be flat. And I'm like, what? Not you too. No, not you too. Not you too. <laughs> and she goes here. And she sent me a couple of videos. One of them was Mark Sargent's clues, which he had just started, I think. And, um, and, and some others. And I started watching them. I said, okay, I'll watch them. And I watched them. And I was like, I don't know what to make of that, you know? And I said, you know what? I'm going to just look deeper. I'm going to research this. I'm going to find out what this PSYOP is about. Because this is, this the flutter PSYOP is here to discredit all of the other good truthers out there. That's what I believe, okay? Right. You know, because, you know, well, look, flat, stupid truther, you know, that's investigating 9-11. He thinks the earth is flat, so now we have to negate 9-11, okay? Right. But then for two weeks, I tried to prove the globe. And after that two weeks, I was like, holy crap, you know, I barely slept, looking left and right. And at that time, 2014 ish, um, YouTube would feed you. Oh, you like that? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch it. And they would send us all the good videos. Now, if you Google Flat Earth, Google my name, Google Flat Earth, Blue Flat Earth, you know, debunking the globe, anything, it'll come up with the same hit pieces, the hit, same propaganda, no matter what you search for. There's another thing that happens. Check this out. Go to my channel, DITRH, or, or, or any other channel um, that has real Flat Earth stuff. Watch a bunch of videos that have Flat Earth in the title, Flat Earth in the keywords, and they'll show up in your YouTube history, mm -hmm. just like they should, right? If you were searching, uh, you know, um, health uh, stuff, uh, cures for the common cold, whatever, a month ago, two months ago, a year ago, it's in your history. You just search those words right. and it'll show up in your history. You watch a whole bunch of Flat Earth videos, real Flat Earth videos, and then search your history for Flat Earth all of those videos will not show up and propaganda videos will show up. It's the only topic that that happens with. You could be looking up COVID. You could be looking up, uh, you know, anything, Bigfoot, um, whatever. They'll, they'll all show up. But if you look up flat earth, your history on flat earth, it's been replaced. All of the good videos are gone. That alone right there should tell you something's going on. When Congress had their disinformation or you know, what's going on with all social media disinformation, 
they used flat earth as their example. What happens, you know, and they're like, oh, we're going to just put a label on it. You know, this is not true. And it's an archaic uh, belief. Not true. It's all straw man stuff. So, so that's how I got into it. I tried to debunk it. And then um, my podcast actually blew up because the other two guys really couldn't handle flat earth, uh, you know. And uh, so we, we gave it a rest after three years. And I started the flat earth podcast. And um, it was the only one at the time. And uh, it was uh, it was a huge success. It went kind of viral. And then I created this app um, and uh, because, you know, you can't put the app breaks the algorithm. Um, that's the app. Um, the app breaks, uh, break, breaks the algorithm and feeds you the content and gives you the information at your fingertips. So there you go. So uh, first of all, for our viewers, the app is available on flat, flatearthdave.com. Is that right? Yeah, everything I talk about, you can find at flatearthdave.com. Like we have a conference coming up October 21st and 22nd. It's called Flat Toberfest in Las Vegas. You can find it um, on flatearthdave.com. If I talk about Elon Musk being a fraud, what Elon Musk a fraud? That's impossible. Um, just go to flatearthdave.com, click on the Elon Musk banner, five minutes. You'll understand that he's a complete and total fraud. Um, and 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 the app is also there. The app's three dollars, one time charge. You have you, get, you have it forever. There's a ten eleven dollar a year subscription if you want to use the communications and profiles and and you know friends with other people and use all of that. It's eleven dollars a year. Basically, you're buying me a margarita. And you're not tipping the bartender. And it's a you, you set it up like a social uh, social media gathering place. Is that right? I, well, one one you know besides all the eleven dollars. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Well, the eleven dollars it, it brings you um, to uh, it brings you to it's kind of like Facebook where you have uh, friends and uh, you can message them. Right. And you can you can post stuff and and basically people are using it to find significant others to find people that they want to go into business with, find people just to be friends with because everybody on the app is um, super, uh, super awake, awoke, and uh, you have more in common with them than any other dating or job site will ever put no you, kidding. put you, uh, put you uh, together with. Um, and then also we have uh, games that you're going to be able to play remotely with other people that's coming out next. I'm working on it right now. Hopefully it'll be ready by Flattoberfest. So um, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, that's people crazy. go, People, you know, the, the trolls out there that, you know, if you make a flat earth comment, the trolls will jump right on you and go, flat earth is stupid. It's dying. The, look at the algorithm. Look at the, the amount of flat earth searches. In 2017, flat earth was the number, it became the number one search term on, on YouTube and Google. It, I think it was Britney Spears and Trump was number one. And then flat earth overtook Trump. And the next day, guess what Google did? They took down, down. the scoreboard. Surfed you. They know they took down oh. the scoreboard and then they changed the algorithm. So they're hiding all the people that are searching for it. They don't, you know, when they say, you know, oh, there's a hundred people search for this. No, it's a hundred thousand people search for it. Okay. Right. So, you know, this is, this is just, is this an audio? This is a video podcast, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these, these are just the people around me. I could touch one of these dots, right? Oh, and nice. I could look at, uh, I could look at the profile of that person and I could, um, message them and you know all sorts of stuff you can search people by by keywords it's literally um the greatest way to find awaken where people let's say i want to move to florida i could search florida real estate broker and i could find a flat earth real estate broker in florida rather than have to deal with a baller normie real estate broker that's selling me a house <laughs> and thinks they live on a spinning ball right i'd rather talk to somebody that knows where we live when i want to move right. to florida, where i want to live yeah Okay, so one of the one of the next questions I have for you, Dave, because we're we're looking for the the evidence, right? So one of them that really got me was the water issue. Obviously, the oceans, the lakes, um, on a spinning ball. Talk about that. So so people they they the bowlers want their cake and eat it too. They go, the earth is so big, you have no idea how big it is that you can't see the curve. Right. You used to say, oh, you're flown an airplane, stupid flat earther. And then we showed you that um, we can actually send a balloon up higher than an airplane and it's flat. And they're like, oh, OK, well, you have to be uh, higher than that. You got to go, um, you know, they keep moving the globe post up and up and up. You know, first they're like airplane. Then it was like, oh, you got to be in a big fighter at 70,000 feet. And the myth busters, the sellouts that they are, they um, they're showing us this curved earth looking through curved glass fisheye lens but one of their cameras the rear viewing camera didn't have a fisheye lens and there's the horizon eye level okay so we point wow. that out and then neil degrasse tyson comes out and goes oh well you've got to be higher than that you know um the red bull jump right and uh 
You, you guys remember the Red Bull jump? Yep. 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 So um, the Red Bull jump, you know, he, uh, he, um, he, Felix goes up there. And uh, they says, oh, I saw the curve of the earth. And they show this amazing picture with the curve of the earth. And so we're like, hmm, that's interesting. And we zoom in and we find out that all of this land is New Mexico. Did you know that New Mexico covered a third of the earth? Okay. I mean, if that's the curve, that's like a quarter or a third of the earth. Right. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson comes out and goes, you can't see the, the, the curvature. You know, you're, he had a beach ball globe. And he goes, you're one, two millimeters over this. That stuff is flat. Again, a poke in the eye, right? That stuff is flat from that point of view. So they just keep moving the globe posts again and again and again. But so they want you to believe you can't see the curvature. But then the next best proof is they want you to believe that boats go over the horizon. Okay? That you can see a boat over the horizon. So now using globe math, right? Not flat earth math, globe math. Okay? Um, do you know how much curvature there is at just three miles? If the Earth is 24,901 miles around, like the globe tells us, globe believers don't know that number. Flat earthers know that number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's <laughs> six feet of drop at just three miles. So, so when you're standing at the edge of calm water, perfectly calm water, not a ripple mm. or swell, and you're standing up and you're six feet tall, you should not be able to see the surface of the water beyond three miles because it's six foot drop. So now you have your curve, right? My mouth is behind this curve. It's a physical right. curve. Zooming in isn't going to help bring it back in, right? Because it's a physical right. curve. A globe Earth requires a physical curve at X distance. Now, if there's waves, right? If there's, if there's waves, um, that's going to bring the apparent horizon closer to you. OK, and if there's um, if there's a uh, fog or any type of atmospheric density, that's going to bring closer. And if you sit down, that's going to bring the horizon like to less than two miles away from you. Now, if you're watching a sunset on California, does that sun look like it's intersecting the water a mile or two or three miles from you? No, it looks like it's way out there. So so what are we seeing then? Right. So here is. Um, you don't see any boats out here. We zoom in and all of a sudden we increase the angular size of these boats and we can see them. Now, are these boats partially hidden behind the curve of the earth or are there just swells in their way? Look at this boat. It appears, disappears. Now, is that over the curve of the earth? No, it's just behind what we call an artificial horizon. Can my finger hide my entire face? No. But if it was closer to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So these waves in the foreground will hide a boat in the background. You know, and the Globers say, you know, what about uh, what about big ships, right? And then uh, you look at uh, you you just understand that waves just a couple miles out, a big ship gets smaller and smaller and smaller in the distance. So not only can that one or two foot wave hide that entire ship, it can hide an entire city in the distance. Because things get smaller and smaller and smaller in the distance, right? Once you understand that, um, then you uh, then you understand. You know, people are like, "What? Are the waves bigger than the ships?" No, my finger's not bigger than my face. Okay, right. So, on the app, on the frequently asked question page, on the boats over the horizon button, there are a ton of videos. YouTube is hiding from you. Google's hiding from you. You'll never find them unless you know the channel name and the exact title. But if you go to Boats Over the Horizon, watch those videos. And that's what I did. When I was, well, I watched all these videos about the Boats Over the Horizon, I went out and bought a Nikon P900. I spent like $1,000 on the camera and tripod, went down to the beach, sat down at the water's edge on a beautifully clear, calm day. And I zoomed in yeah. on stuff that should have been 60 feet below the curve of the earth. 60 feet. What's the measurement at 60 feet? Uh, no, at, at, no, 60 feet. Um, at 10 miles, there's 66 feet of curvature. So no, so know what I did? I didn't just believe that. I said, something's wrong with the curve calculator. Earth is a globe, and this curve calculator is wrong. So I went to the D. I went to the, you know, looking for what's the proper curvature of the Earth. And there's three formulas. There's three different ways to derive it. And one of them is the easiest, which is eight inches. <laughs> excuse me. 
eight inches per mile squared based off of the Pythagorean theorem. And, um, and uh, I said, that's got to be wrong because I can see this stuff. And of course, the earth is a globe. So I went to the debunking sites and the debunking site said, well, that's not how it works, right? Because you think you're here and the drop is here. But in reality, you're here. There's a hump and a drop. So it's only half that amount, right? And I thought about that and I'm like, that's ridiculous. But let's use it. There should only be 33 feet of curvature. I could see buoys on the water with water beyond them. Where's the 33 feet? Right. Okay. So that's the first thing that really kind of brought me in. I'm like, and then I was like, well, what about refraction? You know? And uh, when you look, these things aren't refracted. Okay. They're, they're, they're not refracted. And you know, the best thing the Globers have is they take um, like a basketball and they put like, I think it was like a little red piece of yarn right over the horizon of the basketball. And then they poured liquid nitrogen on the basketball and the orange or the red, whatever the, the, the thread showed up, like the color showed up for a couple, for a second. Okay. That's the best that they have. Yeah. But, but how do you pull cities up 